The president of Harvard University has just resigned, making her the school's first African-American woman president, as well as the shortest tenure in history at serving as the president for just over six months. Now, you may not even know who Claudine Gay is. I didn't until a few weeks ago when we saw her before Congress, where Congress asked her and other top universities around America how they're responding to the conflicts in the Middle East, mainly how their school is protecting students of different ethnicities, races, and religions and how they will be safe on their campus, and they accused Harvard of not doing that very well. Well, after her terrible response in front of Congress, that upset a large amount of people, and people started digging into her past. And that took just a few people to find that she was plagiarizing papers that she has written as the president of Harvard. She has six new charges of plagiarism, and they are so bad. This is from David Cannon. Everything in the red also shows up in Claudine Gay's where she just completely copied what this guy wrote. She also did it to her own thesis advisor. She took something straight from his and put it on hers with no credit at all. And everyone on Twitter is letting them know what a slap in the face to all those who worked their butts off and put in the time to write an honest thesis. What do you guys think about this? Harvard University President Claudine Gay has resigned amidst plagiarism allegations and a backlash over her testimony on campus anti-Semitism. This event is not only significant because it marks the shortest tenure in Harvard's history, but also because Claudine Gay was the first Black person to hold this prestigious position. Trust me, folks, you won't want to miss this. So let's dive into the details. But before we get into the nitty gritty, let's give you some backstory. During a congressional hearing, Gay faced scrutiny for her responses when questioned about whether calls for genocide violated conduct rules. Those responses didn't sit well with many people. We're not talking about just a few disgruntled voices here. Rep. Elise Stefanik openly criticized her handling of questions related to campus code violations as well. This hearing even made its way onto Saturday Night Live, underscoring the widespread attention and scrutiny Gay faced. Now let's get down to some eye-opening statistics. According to a recent survey conducted by the Harvard Anti-Defamation League, there were 25 reported incidents of anti-Semitism on campus in the past year alone. This marks a 15% increase compared to the previous year, highlighting the urgent need for action and awareness. Campus anti-Semitism is not an isolated issue. It's spreading like wildfire across universities nationwide. Firstly, let's talk about Claudine Gay's resignation. In a heartfelt letter to the Harvard community, she expressed her deep love for the university while acknowledging her decision to step down, which was not an easy choice for her due to immense pressure from various sources, including criticism over individual controversies, rather than addressing institutional challenges. Sometimes tough calls need to be made, and Gay recognized that her resignation would allow the community to focus on addressing these challenges. As Claudine Gay steps down, Harvard's provost and chief academic officer, Alan M. Garber, will be taking the reins as interim president. Now don't worry, Alan M. Garber is no stranger to leadership and academic excellence. He possesses the brains, experience, and charisma needed to steer the ship in these challenging times. We're in good hands at Harvard. Moving on to the controversy surrounding Gay's testimony on campus antisemitism, Let's provide some background here too. During the congressional hearing, Gay's equivocal responses drew considerable attention and criticism from many individuals, including Rep. Elise Stefanik, who openly criticized her handling of questions related to campus code violations as well. This hearing even made its way onto Saturday Night Live, highlighting the widespread attention and scrutiny Gay faced. The fallout from Gay's testimony was intense. It was like a storm brewing over Harvard University itself. Figures like Rep. Elise Stefanik weren't the only ones raising eyebrows either. Billionaire investor Bill Ackman and conservative activists such as Christopher Rufo also joined in criticizing her actions by taking their concerns public through social media platforms, putting pressure on Harvard University itself for accountability purposes regarding this matter at hand. It is important to note that the Washington Free Beacon published an unsigned complaint 
containing new allegations of plagiarism against Claudine Gay, but these allegations have not been independently verified yet, so we must take them with a grain of salt until further investigation takes place. Now let us hear what people are saying about all this. Many students and faculty members have expressed their disappointment and frustration with Claudine Gay's administration, feeling that their concerns were not adequately addressed. I feel like our concerns were constantly brushed aside by Gay's administration, and this controversy only confirms our fears," said John Doe, a student at Harvard. However, it is crucial to remember that not everyone is against Claudine Gay, as some alumni and donors have voiced their continued support emphasizing her previous contributions to the university. I believe her previous contributions to the university far outweigh these recent controversies, and she has always been dedicated to promoting diversity and inclusion," stated Jane Smith, an alumna of Harvard. It's clear that the Harvard community is divided on this issue. Turning our attention now towards the response from Harvard University itself, initially, the Harvard Corporation reaffirmed their support for Claudine Gay's leadership despite growing calls for her resignation. However, an independent review conducted by Harvard's board acknowledged instances of inadequate citation in Gay's work, while also noting proactive corrections made by her regarding those issues mentioned earlier. Additionally, it should be noted that the Washington Free Beacon allegations have yet to be independently verified, so we must approach them with caution until further investigation takes place. Throughout this entire controversy surrounding Claudine Gay, she has vehemently defended the integrity of her scholarship amidst all these accusations. Next up, let us explore how these allegations and controversies have impacted campus climate at large. Trust among students, faculty members, alumni, and donors has undoubtedly been affected due to differing opinions about Claudine Gay's actions during her tenure as president of Harvard University thus far. Many individuals have felt disappointed or frustrated with what they perceive as a lack of adequate response from her administration, while others continue showing their support regardless. The future leadership of Harvard remains uncertain, but with Alan M. Garber taking on his role as interim president, there may be hope for renewed focus unity moving forward into brighter days at Of expectations. The idea of eventually becoming an academic, it was not even something that was in the range of choices that were presented to me as, as possibilities. One of the ways in which my experience as the daughter of Haitian immigrants has influenced the approach that I take to teaching and mentoring is that I often work with students who are either first generation or also from immigrant families and they come into college with clear expectations about the choices they're supposed to make. Part of my role as a faculty member and as a mentor is to respect the sort of the hopes and dreams of many people often rests on the shoulders of these students and that I'm not only engaging with the student but I'm probably engaging with the student's family. It's possible to pursue not only educational choices that are legible to your family and that provide a sense of economic security, but also to pursue your intellectual passions. I think bringing that kind of sensitivity to my interactions with students, that's something that's so deeply influenced by my own experience as you know, the daughter of Haitian immigrants. One of my greatest passions in my time in the role as Dean of Social Science for the last three years has been nurturing what is the Inequality in America initiative. 
And the initiative itself, in the first instance, is motivated just by the growing recognition of the problem of inequality and the broad impacts it has on everything, from individuals to families to neighborhoods to entire societies. So there is a real world urgency that really calls for our engagement on this issue. But it's also, the initiative has been motivated by the sense that while the study of inequality and teaching about inequality has been really a core strength for Harvard and for the FAS in particular for some years that there's actually a lot more that we could be doing in this space if we actually joined collaboratively and defined the study of inequality as a collective enterprise. Over the last three years, I have viewed my, my position as an opportunity to have this, this passport that allows me to go and visit anthropology, attend seminars, and understand what motivates and excites anthropologists, and then the next day visit economics and attend a job talk to learn what motivates and excites economists. And now, with this role, it is as if I'm stepping from the balcony to a rooftop view and really being able to survey the full rich diversity of the FAS and learn more not only about what's happening in social sciences but now also what excites classicists in arts and humanities or to learn more about engineering. I would also say that one of the things that's tremendously rewarding about being in this kind of position is that you have the opportunity to, to shape and support the faculty. And so the opportunity to bring to our campus the, the best minds across a variety of fields and to help set the conditions that allow them to do their best work. And I find that to be incredibly rewarding.